I'm almost a year into making videos. And I just wanted to share with you my experiences of doing so. Perhaps you're thinking about starting a brewing channel. I really do recommend it if you're a passionate brewer, but you might not know some things that I'm going to share with you, which might affect your decision <laughs> or just how you tackle uh, your videos in the future. So the first issue that I hit with brewing, and this isn't just with filming, but that it takes so much time. It's really time demanding. A brew day at the absolute shortest is probably around six hours, especially if you start including cleaning and prep and planning your recipe and all of that stuff. And you can't really do a little bit and then stop. You really, to have a proper brew day, you need to do it all in one go. You compare that to, I don't know, painting Warhammer figurines, and you could do that for half an hour and then move on to um, your job <laughs> or, you know, something else. Whereas brew days, they require a whole day. So that means for me, a Saturday or a Sunday, which, you know, I might not really fancy getting up really early and brewing on. Now, this is more of a problem with myself, to be honest, that I always brew in the morning, but sometimes I can't help myself and I stay up late at night, often playing Apex Legends, which then makes me tired. And then I try waking myself up at six in the morning and lo and behold, I'm knackered because I was doing really badly at a computer game. <laughs> now, something that can slow down lots of brewers like myself is because I don't have a dedicated room or space, garage, shed, that is solely for brewing, I have to always bring all of my brewing equipment into the kitchen, get it all prepped every single time that I want to brew, and that can take ages. I try and do that the day before, but still it can be really time consuming. Personally, I'm actually one of the lucky ones that I have this weird void space in my house, which means that I can actually hide all of my brewing gear up there, and it doesn't really get in the way of anything else in the house. Don't judge me for the room that this void space is in. It is where we're keeping all of the wedding stuff and all of the other bits and pieces that we have nowhere for. And also those stairs are going, they are scary. <laughs> also on a brew day, I have to make absolute sure that my kitchen is spotless. Obviously you should do that anyway when you're brewing in your kitchen. But for me, I have to make sure that absolutely everything's not in the way because otherwise it looks bad on film. I, I could just accept that some, you know, bottles of bleach might randomly appear in the background of a video, but I just hate it. it. It really bombs me. So I have to make absolute sure that there's nothing weird in the kitchen. So let's say that the brew day went really well. It took about six hours altogether. Well, then I have filmed most of that. You know, I try and film key moments. I used to film absolutely everything and show footage of absolutely everything, but you're like, if you've brewed once, <laughs> you've kind of brewed every single time you're ever going to, especially if you're using the exact same gear every time. So I'm trying to spice it up a bit. So I'm doing more interesting B-roll and so on. But yeah, I'm still trying to film the whole time. So I then need to go through all of that footage. And a unique part to this hobby, especially when you take into consideration filming it, is that especially if you're planning on doing a grain to glass video, which is a video where you show the brewing process and you also taste it on the same video. You've obviously got to ferment the beer and leave that somewhere and hope that it's really nice and it doesn't go bad, although I've done videos about bad beer a few times. The thing is, is that often with my videos, even once I've filmed the main crux of it, I've got to wait possibly two months before I can film the ending of it, which can totally mess with my filming schedule unless I can really get a good backlog going. I personally don't have the luxury of kegging as well, although I have started messing around with mini kegs, which is helping speed up the bottling process. But again, that's maybe another three hours um, on a difficult day. But yeah, often the cleaning and all of that, it can really add up. And so let's whack on another three hours to how long the whole process takes. So we've got to about nine hours of work at least, and that's before I've scripted the video. and that takes at least another hour, possibly longer, depending on how ambitious the video is. My black IPA video took ages to script, 
ages to film because I had so much other stuff going on in it. And then the editing of the video, I use Premiere Pro and that can take between three to 10 hours, if not more. And then you've got to make the thumbnail. Again, that really all depends on how ambitious I'm feeling with the video and what uh, unusual things I may be doing or new techniques that I'm trying out. So really, let's say that it takes nine hours to brew and bottle and it takes roughly nine hours to do all of the video elements um, but probably longer to be honest I'm probably underestimating all of it but that means roughly if I was trying to do a grain to glass video every single week then I would be needing to somehow find 20 hours in a week and that's just not possible you know I do little bits in the evening after work I do little bits on the weekends but I just can't find a whole day out of nowhere so I have to try and be a bit more savvy um, I try and aim to brew once a month but even that can be really difficult to do especially organizing around seeing mine and Charlotte's families and you know preparing for our wedding and life is always busy and the moments that it's not, I'm trying to make videos. I don't try and pressurize myself to make a video every single week. I think that's just too ambitious at the moment for me. I don't want to experience burnout. I've had it before when I was making two podcasts and I was doing loads of comedies and stand up and I was just, I, I totally burnt myself out at one point and I've learned a lot from that experience and I know my limits and so I don't want to burn myself out with this little side project. I'm trying to restrict how gun-ho I go <laughs> with the YouTube thing, uh, which is why I'm absolutely fine with having less than a thousand subs. I know that I'd need to go um, a bit more hardcore if I was to really quickly push above that. That said, I have started doing a few more videos that aren't grain to glass videos, uh, just talking about brewing and other related subjects. Uh, the funny thing is, is that they are actually now my most popular videos. Just me chatting about how much I love Kvike yeast is the most well-performing video I've ever made. In fact, 25% of the hours that I have gained doing YouTube videos have all come from that one video. So maybe I'm a sucker to even attempt filming myself brewing. <laughs> so let's compare brewing to a relatively similar niche, making pizza. Something that I do and I absolutely love doing. I've never made a video on it, but let's compare it to home brewing. Well, making pizza dough can take about half an hour, really, if not less, sometimes more. It really depends on the style of the pizza dough you're making. But really, half an hour is the longest that it's going to take to make the main bit of the dough. You might start doing 24 hour proofs, or you might start doing things like making a poolish or um, making sourdough. You know, there's lots of varieties of pizza, but all of them can be tackled in a relatively short time. You know, you might have to leave them for a few hours to prove, but you leave beer to prove for months. So it's a very different beast. So if I made a weekly video on pizza, I would probably only have to dedicate two hours to filming it. So already that's saved a huge amount of time. Um, and then the editing, would probably take just as long, so let's say that's 10 hours. So in this world where I somehow found 20 hours, I could make two pizza videos in a week. So yeah, it would take half the time to make a video about making pizza, but I don't really wanna make videos on pizza personally. But maybe when I was coming up with what kind of YouTube channel I should make, I should have made a gaming channel. I've been an avid gamer my whole life. It's probably the hobby that I've collectively spent the most time on. Uh, definitely at uni, definitely at college, definitely at school, and definitely when I was living in a pokey little flat on my own in Bristol and pretty much spent all my nights playing Overwatch. I really love gaming as a way of relaxing and I was concerned that if I tried making it into my YouTube channel that I would start hating gaming and I don't want to ever do that. That really is my proper relaxing moment. Plus I'm in my 30s now, so my reaction times are nowhere near as good as what they used to be. And I'm just mostly getting beaten whenever I play Apex Legends, despite how much I enjoy it. The elephant in the room that all people who make brewing videos know exists is that the reality is not that many people are into brewing. Sure, lots of people are into brewing. It's a really exciting and fun hobby, but 
it's mostly American dudes who watch my videos. Most of them are in their 40s. The two biggest brewing channels in the world, Clawhammer Supply and the Craft Beer Channel, both have about 150,000 subscribers. That is a huge number, it's amazing. It, I would love to have even just a, a lick of that. You know, even to have a 10% of how many people are following them, I would be so happy. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it looks like the ceiling for YouTube subscribers for people who make videos about home brewing is 150,000 people. Now let's compare that to a different hobby. Loads of channels that dedicate themselves to just knitting have almost a million followers. Some of them even have a million followers. So some of them are creeping to more than 10 times the biggest channels in this niche. I'll do a different video in the future explaining why the subscriber ceiling is so much lower with homebrewing compared to a lot of other hobbies. So if you're interested in that, then please do subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when I eventually post that on here. So really with this video, I just wanna celebrate how amazing the people who are week in, week out making amazing brewing videos on YouTube because over the last year, I've really learned that it is really hard and there's so much work involved with it. It's not the most forgiving hobby. It's one of the hardest hobbies out there. It's so time consuming. The people who are making great videos are just really doing such amazing work. I especially love the craft beer channel. I don't just think that they're doing great information videos about how to brew beers. I think they're doing amazing work in celebrating and saving the British brewing industry. Their documentaries about car scale are so informative and so lovingly made. Um, I don't think they care that they've only got 150,000 subscribers compared to knitting channels that have got a million subscribers because they are making videos about the things that they absolutely love. And that's why I do love brewing. And that's why I love making videos about brewing because it's a really lovely hobby. I've met so many amazing people whilst getting into this hobby. I'm so pleased that I decided one day to start filming myself on my phone and uh, learning all about this process because it's really taught me a lot. So I'm so happy that I did decide to start making this channel. And I really now feel like I should have brewed this morning because I've got myself very excited about making beer. <laughs> so I know if you're subscribed to this channel, then you are absolutely also subscribed to Clawhammer Supply and the Craft Beer channel. If you're not, you really should be watching their videos. There's loads of home brewers out there making amazing content on YouTube. And I just wanna make sure that you're aware of some of my favorites. Uh, the Apartment Brewer, I don't think I would be making these videos if it wasn't for him. He really did teach me so much and I'm so appreciative of him and his amazing channel. The Brew Show, Homebrew for Life, Flora Brewing, Hops and Gnarly, and Nikita Norristov. I hope I pronounced your name right there. And there's loads of others. I'll put in the comments all of my favorite home brewing channels. So personally, I'm gonna carry on making my videos um, to however many people want to watch my videos. I'm really proud of some of the content that I'm now creating and I've become a much better filmmaker, I feel. So thank you for watching this long-winded excuse as to why I didn't brew today. Um, I will actually brew tomorrow and you'll eventually see what I'm planning on brewing. I'm thinking of brewing a bitter using carrots. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, then please do um, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you'd like to see me actually brewing, then please do watch this video. It's the best thing that I've ever made. I worked so hard on it. I'm so proud of it. I really think it was um, a real key moment in my progression as a YouTuber. I think this is so good. So please do check it out. 